Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Gospel and Spade. Today in this video, we're going to start a new mini-series which will examine the life of and archaeology relating to the Biblical King Hezekiah, which is found in both Biblical and extra-biblical sources. Today we're going to look at the rise and religious reforms of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, whose name means Jehovah is strength, was the son of the ungodly king Ahaz, the previous king of Judah, and Abijah, who was also called Abai. He was 25 years old when he became king and reigned for 29 years in Jerusalem between the years 715 to 686 BC. The biblical records of the main events of his reign can be found recorded in the Old Testament books of 2 Kings chapters 18 to 20, 2 Chronicles chapters 29 to 32, and Isaiah chapters 36 to 39, and which I encourage you to read after watching this documentary. One direct piece of evidence for this biblical king is the small Hezekiah seal that was found in Jerusalem in 2009 in the area of the Ophel which is located between the site of the Temple Mount and the city of David. The seal reads belonging to Hezekiah son of Ahaz king of Judah. Unlike his father who had closed Solomon's temple in Jerusalem Hezekiah in the very first month of his reign ordered the priests and Levites to repair, cleanse and reopen the temple for the purpose of restarting the public worship of God in the prescribed manner given to Moses in the law. Hezekiah in his early reign also led a series of religious reforms that led to the destruction of idols and false places of worship across Israel along with the reinstatement of religious festivals like the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This reform movement seemed to have little success or popularity amongst the Jews that were left in the former Kingdom of Israel in the north, but was accepted more readily in Judah during the reign of Hezekiah. It is not clear what exactly prompted Hezekiah to turn his back on his father's idolatrous ways. But it is possible that with the mountain pressure from the Neo-Assyrian Empire that was pushing upon Judah from the north may have been one important factor. It would seem that, based upon Hezekiah's later rebellion against the Assyrians, that Judah was at this stage a semi-independent vassal kingdom that was required to pay tribute to the Assyrians on a regular basis. In 722 BC, only a few years prior to Hezekiah becoming king, the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel, Samaria, had been taken by the Assyrians, and the northern kingdom ceased to exist as a kingdom from that point on. This left only the smaller kingdom of Judah in the south as the only remaining Jewish kingdom. It would also seem very likely according to 2 Chronicles chapter 29 verses 5 to 11 and verses 25 to 30, that Hezekiah correctly connected the destruction of Israel by Assyria and his own kingdom's increasing misfortunes and setbacks to the Jews' rejection of true biblical worship laid out by Moses and their embracing of false worship and idolatry. This false worship, according to 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 4 and 2 Chronicles chapter 31 verse 1, consisted of practices of worshipping idols like Baal and other false gods at high places, groves, horned altars, and even went as far as them worshipping the brazen serpent which they called Nehushtan that Moses had set up in the wilderness found in the book of Numbers chapter 21 verse 9. An example of the remains of these religious reforms can be seen at Beersheba in southern Judah, where the remains of a four-horned cut stone altar with an image of a serpent engraved on it was discovered, 
which has been dated by many to the 8th century BC, around the time of King Hezekiah. The altar had been destroyed at some point in the 8th century, and its stone was reused as building material for a wall at the site. The practice of graven images, like the serpent found on the altar, which could be a reference to Nehushtan, and the building of illegal altars from hand-cut stone was forbidden according to Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 and verse 25. Also, only the altar at the tabernacle and later temple of Solomon could have horns on its four corners according to the book of Exodus chapter 27 verses 1 and 2 and chapter 30 verses 1 to 6. Other illegal altars and places of worship have been found across Israel, at sites like Arad, where a small temple structure was found that is similar to that of the approved temple at Jerusalem. Other such sites include Dan, Dolphin, Kedesh, Megiddo, Shiloh, Shechem, Gezer, and Lachish. In fact, at Lachish, the horns of two altars that were found in the gate of the city were deliberately chipped off, and also the shrine that was in the gate apparently was sealed off at some point in the 8th century BC, and even made into a symbolic latrine. The stone toilet seat may not have actually been used as a toilet seat, based upon recent tests that found no trace of any ancient fecal matter on the seat whatsoever. This act may seem at first very strange, but it appears to have been a very strong and obvious way of desecrating the site of false worship, either literally or symbolically. This practice of desecrating a site of worship can be found in King Jehu's desecration of a site of Baal worship in Samaria which is found recorded in 2 Kings chapter 10 verse 27. It has been concluded by many that this destroyed illegal altar at Beersheba, along with other destroyed altars and sites from the time, including that of Lachish, was demolished during the reign of King Hezekiah, during his religious reforms. It also shows the pervasive influence of false worship across all of Israel, just as the Old Testament clearly teaches. I hope you've enjoyed this first video in the King Hezekiah series. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel as it does really help me out. Also, if you have any suggestions, feedback or comments, please do leave them below. Also, if there's anything that you might like to see me do in the future as a documentary or a short video, please let me know in the comments and I will see what I can do. Thank you very much and God bless.